Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Revolution's webinar. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 29th of May. Hope everyone had a wonderful uh, Memorial Day weekend, a nice, relaxing Memorial Day weekend, and uh, hit the ground running uh, this week. Uh, this is effectively using data, or data if you prefer, to optimize your marketing funnel. Uh, my name is Mike Hanbury. I'm Director of Business Development here at Revolution's. With me is my colleague, Jack. Uh, say hello to the folks, Jack. Hello to the folks, Jack. There you go. All right, burns it out. Eat your heart out. Thank you, as we always say. Thanks for playing along. Uh, Jack, Jack's going to assist me with the webinar. If you send in questions, please do so via the chat. Jack will funnel those in, and we'll get those answered at different points uh, during the uh, during the broadcast here. And uh, and we'll ask you uh, for some uh, at some times for some uh, for some feedback. We're going to so launch a couple of polls and uh, and see how uh, see how people are doing. Uh, get a baseline, that kind of thing. What we can do. Uh, to help you move forward, and make sure that we are speaking, uh, speaking to you, at uh, and uh, making your uh, making your uh, uh, making your experience a good one. I see we already got some stuff, uh, some communications coming in. Correct. So awesome! Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, move forward a little bit about Webolutions. So we got a few people in there who don't know us. Uh, so I really appreciate you joining us. We also have some clients uh, and uh, and uh, and some uh, some new folks. Uh, and I see we've got some competitors who have joined us too. It is my professional pleasure to contribute to your acumen. It is my pleasure. And uh, Rising Tide lifts all boats. Uh, Webolutions has been a leader uh, in, uh, in website development, digital marketing, and ROI analysis for 25 years. Uh, and we've held that leadership position uh, for that time. We uh, uh, continue, plan to continue, continue to do so. So uh, welcome, welcome aboard. Uh, we, uh, we are a website digital marketing agency. Uh, operating continuously since 1994, we've launched and created more than 2,000 uh, websites. We've uh, our honors include uh, uh, in lead generation tactics and in, uh, and in website design. Uh, uh, we uh, 2018 Communicators Award of Excellence. Uh, we just won another one, right? Uh, we have another. Uh, uh, so we're very happy uh, about that. Those are arguably uh, the most uh, prestigious awards for smaller agencies in our industry. So uh, we're very happy uh, to to be able to share that with you and. Our purpose, we help passionate people to thrive. Welcome to the webinar. Very glad to have a bunch of passionate people uh, joining us. We appreciate you spending your time. If you weren't passionate about this, you'd be uh, just having lunch uh, right about now. So I uh, appreciate you uh, uh, ch chowing down while you, while, you, while you join us. This is me. My name is Mike Hander, Director of Business Development here. Uh, and a few things about me. I've been with this company since 2010. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about, I get, you got to talk about what you know. Uh, so uh, before I was the sales guy here, I was uh, I led the uh, online marketing department and uh, and learned SEO from the very best uh, by uh, by working here just by osmosis. Uh, so uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, where I take some of this uh, some of this discussion just to give you some examples of uh, of, of putting the stuff that we're talking about uh, to work. Um, and with that, I promised a poll. Let's do that. Uh, we are going to talk today about data analysis, and uh, one of the and uh, one of our points here uh, is about data analysis. I'm going to uh, I'm going to come. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay here. The uh, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that we that we want to uh, talk about is is the relevance of the data that you are that you are uh, that you are measuring, that you are collecting, that you are analyzing. Uh, it is uh, it's, uh, uh, it's big data, right? About five years ago, there was big data, and we had all this information, and then it got to be too much information. Right? We had numbers, 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 and ratios, and commas, and decimal points, and all these things that packed each other, and it got to be too much. So here's what we do. We pick the, 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 the data that matters to us and is going to be most impactful. So those are tied to your business goals. I know that at least one of you who's on the webinar is operating on a strategic plan that your company has defined, and I'm wondering if others have. And more to the point, I'm going to launch this poll. He said confidently. Here we go. Launch polling. Here we go. Uh, does your company openly and regularly share overall business performance metrics? Meaning, uh, have you, if you've established these things and your overall goals, we have to do these things by this date. Uh, our goal is to increase revenue, is to increase profitability, is to whatever it is. Do you stand in front of the company, or does someone stand in front of the company? Do you have conferences? Do you send emails? Do you have some kind of communication? And this is going to vary in the size of the company. But do you do you regularly share the uh, how your uh, how the company is performing overall? Just pick the answer that's close to 
that fits you most closely uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and let us know here and we'll come back to these results. If anybody out there is struggling with this, if this is a thing where like we don't know if to share or how to share uh, or, uh, or, uh, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or whatever, if this, is a, if this is something that you're struggling with, and especially if you're in the Denver area, we host a workshop, uh, a free introductory workshop to help executives establish those things, put those systems together, uh, and build communications and constructive cultures uh, uh, around around those things. So if you're interested in that, send us a note, send it through the chat. We won't address it here in the webinar today, but we'll be happy to provide you some more information uh, offline. Uh, so uh, so we'll come back to those poll results uh, in just a moment. Uh, let us uh, uh, go move into the meat uh, of the program if we could. Some uh, actionable insights is the uh, uh, is uh, uh, the where we'll begin. Actionable meaning what can you do, right? There's no sense in sweating over numbers that you cannot that are either irrelevant or that you can't do anything about. Actionable insights. The first thing I want to talk about is return on investment. You never know who's going to show up, so I want to make sure that we are talking about the same thing. ROI. Uh, something about revolutions. Um, we weren't founded by a designer or a programmer. The founder and CEO, who uh, still leads this company very actively, uh, was a stockbroker uh, with degrees in finance and accounting, who was raised by an engineer. So ROI is in our DNA, as is data analysis. There are a lot of spreadsheets involved uh, when you work with us. Uh, and uh, and with, uh, everything that we do is tracked down to ROI. Marketing is often seen as a cost item. Marketing is, in fact, an investment from which you should expect a return. You're putting money into something. You're putting effort into something. We'll talk more about that also. You should expect to get positive returns from that. Now, and the idea behind the webinar is to help uh, identify what to measure uh, and, uh, and how you might do so. Uh, so systems and tools to do that. So ROI, here's, some, uh, uh, here's an invest. Uh, uh, I like this definition for it. If you uh, and. Uh, uh, and ROMI is, uh, is a term you might hear uh, in our industry. It's kind of the same thing. You return on your marketing investment. Uh, this uh, uh, is uh, the thing on the right there uh, is probably, I think, the best, the best graph. Uh, you saw that I, uh, I have one of those nerdy uh, executive MBAs where they teach you and they teach you all about ratios and they drill that into your head and so forth. And this is uh, a pretty easy, good, uh, meaningful way to calculate your ROI in any investment you make, including your marketing investment. So your gain minus the cost that you put in uh, divided, by, uh, uh, divided by that cost uh, gives you a ratio. More simply, you put it in, did you get more out? If you don't want to worry about mathematical ratios and so forth, then just ask yourself this question and give yourself a system that gives you the ability to track that. Here's what we put in, here's why we put it in, here's what we expected, are the expectations reasonable, and did it work, right? To what degree did it work? Now, it's not that simple, we'll talk about that, but if you want to boil it down to what we're trying to do here, we're trying to get more out of what we put in. Uh, now, the one of the first uh, uh, mistakes that people make when they're, uh, when they're looking for these things, when they're trying to track them, is uh, they look at the money at the hard costs, and they, fail to, and they fail to ascertain or fail to account for the other things, and that's why our friend here on the slide is he's discovering, oh, I forgot to, uh, forgot to uh, think about these things. Uh, time is a cost, right, uh, in a business like ours, right? We don't have uh, inventory uh, that we mark up. It's all time. We're, we're experts at what we do, and we sell our time, we sell our systems, we sell our programs, we sell ourselves. Uh, and uh, so if, uh, uh, if you're, if you're uh, putting, looking at hard costs without quantifying your time, uh, you're, 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 you're not quantifying uh, the entire cost of what you're putting into any particular effort. Uh, opportunity costs, meaning uh, you can't do everything at the same time. Uh, whenever you decide to do something, you decide to do it instead of something else. Uh, opportunity costs, meaning uh, uh, you, you're, you're, you, you, the decisions that you make uh, prevent you from, uh, from taking advantage of the other opportunities. So what are you giving up uh, in order to do these things? Um, it's uh, you got five thousand dollars. Well, uh, or, or let's take a smaller number. You got a hundred bucks. Uh, is it uh, better? Are you better off uh, spending a hundred bucks in advertising, or is there uh, uh, an influence or a decision maker that you could take to dinner, uh, or put together a presentation for a package and focus that on? Which is uh, uh, you, you, you're going to do one. You can't do the other. Uh, what's the, what's the better uh, way to spend that uh, and invest that? Uh, and productivity. Uh, we are doing these webinars. Here's an example. We are doing these webinars 
and allocating these resources instead of an in-person uh, event that we used to hold. Uh, we, so we reached out to a lot of you uh, via the Smart Marketing for Business community that we, uh, that we created. There's more than 2,000 of you out there uh, who, uh, who joined that community. And 30, 40 or more of you used to show up for our monthly uh, uh, events, uh, which were breakfast for a while and doing happy hours. Uh, and we haven't closed the door on that, just we're, uh, uh, we're testing something else. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons for that is when we did this analysis, we, we have this open office here. It's really cool. Uh, and uh, we can do all kinds of things with it. And once a month, we'd, uh, we'd uh, turn it into a party, uh, a happy hour. It was a, an intentional happy hour where we talked about uh, an, an intentionally generated uh, conversation around marketing subjects. Uh, and uh, the financial cost wasn't that great. Uh, and uh, the time that was spent, we were pretty efficient about uh, which resources we allocated to that, human resources uh, we allocated to that. Um, but uh, uh, a party's a party, man. Uh, and uh, we had good beer because uh, we're beer snobs here in Colorado. Uh, and uh, you're in Colorado, drink the beer. Uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, what we realized is that when we started our party at 4 o'clock, the folks who were on our open, uh, uh, in our open office plan had a hard time being productive when we were over there hobnobbing and networking and cheersing and talking about beer and marketing. So, uh, uh, so it was one of those things we had to take into account. What uh, were we losing? Uh, during those times. So just some examples about things to, uh, to take into account. Uh, this, is a, this is sometimes a, a hard thing to grasp, but it's easier to quantify uh, if, uh, if you know what like, your hourly rates are and what you expect uh, from an employee. Anyway, uh, so uh, just some things to, uh, to uh, take a look at. Our, uh, let's see, we have, uh, we have poll results. Looks like we're about 50-50. Uh, some, uh, uh, some do not share company financials, and uh, about half of you do. Uh, are uh, do uh, are kept informed uh, or, uh, or or are shared. So uh, so that's an interesting to note that we don't uh, that we don't have anybody who is uh, who is uh, uh, is uh, doing the whole thing themselves. So uh, so those are uh, there are poll results. I think I just uh, now share results. There we go. I'm learning a new tool. Uh, so uh, so there's uh, there's our our, our results. Uh, so it's about half and half. Uh, it's about half and half. Uh, 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 through that, so you know who you're, uh, who you're here with. Uh, all right, very interesting. Thank you uh, for taking part uh, in that. Let's move on to, uh, and we've got some questions coming in. Uh, we're loading those, and we'll deal with those in just a few moments. Keep them coming. Uh, the uh, uh, key performance indicators. We talked about ROI. Let's talk about KPI. It's easy to get lost in the jargon. Uh, key performance indicators. There are a couple of kinds of them. We'll talk about both. Uh, a key performance indicator, uh, there's an Oxford Dictionary definition uh, and an Investopedia uh, definition. These are uh, actual metrics. These are the numbers that you collect and you compile and you analyze. Uh, and it's best to uh, decide on a consistent set of metrics, uh, those that are meaningful. And we'll get to, uh, to, uh, to how to decide uh, what metrics are meaningful and give some examples of those here in just a moment. Uh, but I want to make sure we talk and understand we talk about KPIs. This is what we mean, quantifiable measures uh, that you use to gauge performance. Two types of uh, KPIs, leading and lagging. Lagging are uh, uh, output-oriented, uh, and, uh, and leading KPIs are input-oriented. These are predictive. Uh, lagging KPIs are, are output-oriented. This is what we did. This is what happened. Leading, this is what we do. Lagging, this is what happened. And because of their nature, the lagging KPIs are easy to measure. We can see what happened but they're difficult to directly improve or influence, whereas the leading KPIs aren't as easy to measure as far as the, uh, uh, impact goes, but they're easy to influence. We can make decisions and change them, uh, and uh, we'll, dive, uh, we'll dive deeper uh, into those. But I want everybody to have an understanding about what a leading KPI is versus a lagging KPI, and to that end, let's talk about some examples. Here are some examples of what a lagging KPI is, right? This is straight out of business school, if you will, or if you're running a business, you. Uh, you're, uh, uh, you're looking at these things. Uh, we ask about if you're sharing financials and results. These are probably some of the things that uh, that uh, uh, that you are uh, uh, that you are uh, being informed of, or that you're talking to your uh, company about. Uh, uh, EBITDA, maybe not so much. Uh, earnings before interest, uh, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. That one is uh, more for uh, very uh, uh, businesses. The, the metric was invented by the cable industry, John Malone, uh, who uh, came up with that. Uh, and it's a way to talk about earnings before uh, all of the necessary investments you have to do. Big infrastructure, right? Cable TV has an enormous amount of 
physical infrastructure that it has to maintain, and it all depreciates, and the loans amortized, and so it hacks and hacks and hacks uh, with that earnings figure, and the argument is it doesn't show really performance unless you take all that stuff out. Uh, of course, I had an accounting professor in graduate school who uh, said that your business model, you can't take it out. Uh, and have a reliable metric. But these are, uh, these are what we're talking about, lagging KPI examples. And when you plot your strategic plan, these are probably the metrics that you're targeting. Uh, and leading KPIs uh, are the ways that you get there. So most of the folks that we have uh, attending these webinars, uh, and I see on the participant list, are uh, going to live primarily in this world. We are doers. We are producers. We are action takers, right? We make this stuff work. And how do we make it work, right? And what do we measure? Uh, some examples of leading KPIs. Uh, I warned you uh, about my about my uh, digital marketing background, and so this is one of my, uh, the examples that I'll give. Uh, website visitors, all right? The number, the frequency, the return. Uh, how much time are people spending on on our website? Uh, how many pages uh, are we are they consuming on a per visit basis? Uh, 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 what are our conversions when they come to our website? Uh, so our website, for example, has a has a series of, of conversion funnels. We're going to talk more about these things. Uh, 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 how many sales you generate through the website? Uh, uh, how many people uh, who arrived at the at the forum page or at the, uh, filled it out or called your tracking number? Uh, to uh, how many people give you a call? How many lead, how many leads did the website generate once it got there? Um, what how, uh, lead quantity? Uh, what's our, our sales pipeline velocity? You had a lead. Uh, how long did it take you to get that through all the way to uh, a decision? be it uh, won or lost, uh, if you have different stages of your pipeline, uh, uh, how quickly and how uh, predictably uh, or consistently uh, is sales moving people through the pipeline once they've been delivered there uh, by marketing. Uh, uh, other KPI examples, MQL versus SQL. In theory, there should be no difference. Marketing qualified lead versus sales qualified lead. Uh, uh, bigger organizations always say the sales guys want uh, more leads and better leads. Uh, and uh, marketing is constantly working with uh, uh, tweaking their programs and adjusting their, their efforts to, uh, to deliver those. Uh, cost per click, cost per lead, cost per conversion. Your organic position value is a thing that we've worked on here. My goodness, Jack, look at this thing. Uh, there are all of these things that you're supposed to track, right? Oh, my goodness. And ah, okay. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of different ways to track leading KPIs. These are some. Okay, that, uh, uh, and admittedly most of them uh, 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 work in my, uh, my, uh, uh, my area of expertise, but I'm the guy who does the webinar, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it makes the most sense. This is stuff that I can talk about uh, uh, with, uh, with some uh, degree of authority. Uh, your download speed, your nude score, novelty, utility, dependability, economy. We'll probably have a webinar just on that uh, one of these days. Uh, it's, uh, it's how you generate referrals, uh, and it's how the brain works, by the way. Uh, so, uh, uh, but all of these things, uh, uh, so it gets to be, uh, uh, it can get to be uh, pretty intimidating if you look at it like that. But let's uh, let's look at it differently. Am I going to be able to do this? Um, do I? Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to ask you another question. Here's a poll. Another one. We just had one. Let's do another one. Now that we know what KPIs are, and we're on the same page with that. Do you regularly measure your KPIs? And if you would, please just choose. The, uh, the answer that is uh, uh, closest to you, uh, the one that makes the most, uh, uh, that you say, yeah, that describes me uh, the best, closely. Yes, we have established our KPIs. We conduct regular performance and strategy reviews. We have established our KPIs, but we don't look at them regularly, uh, or we have not established them. Uh, there's content in this webinar that uh, is designed to help you, uh, uh, regardless of how, wherever you land uh, on these things, but uh, we want to know. Uh, uh, who we're talking to uh, and how we can help. So uh, some very responses coming in there. We'll, we'll come back uh, to that and uh, in just a moment. And uh, while we do that, let's answer some questions. Let's answer some questions. Um, there's a way for me to bring this full, right? I forget how. Oh, I know. I know. I'm going to... Ah, uh, whatever. Um, we'll just keep it there. Uh, so we're cool. Uh, all right. Here's some questions that are coming in. Sorry, guys. Let's uh, let's 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 take one. You say here's a question. You say leading KPIs are easy to influence. What's an example of how you can influence one of the more leading KPIs you've mentioned? Uh, and 
Yeah, I kind of stuck myself with leaving the slide up there. I can pick uh, uh, all of this. So uh, uh, basically, the answer is decisions, right? Uh, you, you may shift uh, one tactic, a budget from one tactic to another. You may pause a program. You might start a different program. You might shift a uh, strategy within a program, uh, uh, within, a, within a strategy uh, or a tactic. So uh, the, the short answer is because what's required to influence it? A decision that you make or a series of decisions. Here's another question. What makes leading KPIs hard to measure? Excellent question. Okay. Um, one of the pitfalls that, uh, that digital marketers in particular I notice fall into is the, uh, the fallacy of last source attribution. Last source attribution. So um, uh, one, of the, uh, 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 one of these things up here uh, is uh, uh, website conversions. Okay. Um, uh, or on pay-per-click, right? Uh, uh, let's say you run a, 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 a pay-per-click ad uh, campaign, uh, and somebody clicks on the ad, uh, and uh, and uh, or you get a you get a conversion through uh, uh, through a, a pay-per-click landing page. Well, odds are it's unlikely that that person who contacted you or who bought your product, it's unlikely that that was the first time they heard of you, or saw your, uh, uh, or read your content, or saw your advertisement. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, anywhere 30 is what we're going with. Uh, the 30 touch points anymore with the amount of information that we're all processing. Once upon a time it was seven. Now we think it's 30. Now maybe more. Uh, we see 4,000 brand impressions per day statistically. Some of us see that many before lunch. Some of us see that many before breakfast. Uh, your uh, uh, so uh, so in your in your tracker. You say, okay, this is a this is a conversion, and if this happens over and over again, then you can uh, attribute a whole bunch of conversions to one tactic, and then you say, oh, so pay per click's working and uh, SEO isn't, so let's make that decision and stop doing SEO and just focus on the pay per click. And what may happen then is you may notice that your conversions go down on pay per click because they were converted. They the, when they decided it was time to talk, your ad showed up and they knew you and they'd been there before and it was time, now they were ready, but maybe they've downloaded your white paper a year ago. Maybe they've been reading your e-newsletter for, for uh, once a month for a year. Uh, maybe they've been attending your webinars and just haven't reached out to you. Maybe they've been surfing your website uh, for the past two years and your competitors for the past few months and only now does it make sense for them to actually speak to you. And so, uh, uh, and so what we'll do with evolutions, by the way, is we'll work with our clients to create what we call a marketing and sales engine where we juxtapose all these things and we're able to measure one, what the highest impact thing to do within the tactics, would you call acquire more email addresses or, uh, or, or, uh, or AB test uh, or do more AB testing of, uh, of subject lines, whatever, uh, uh, versus, and if we do that and how does that look like from historical data, it's going, it's going to impact the overall results. So how do all these things tie together and how do they, uh, how do they matrix? How do they impact each other? Hope that helps. That's a great question. Um, your list of leading KPIs is endless. Are you suggesting that to be successful? We have to monitor and address all of them. Yes. No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we'll go ahead and get into this. In just a moment here, we're going to discuss uh, how to determine uh, what data matters. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I've got this handy. Um, uh, if you're looking for something to, to, that is traditionally measured that you can probably, uh, in terms of a digital metric, that you can probably just throw away and put at the bottom of your list and, and, uh, uh, and discount, I suggest looking at bounce rate. Uh, the phone, the internet's the phone book anyway. If people don't know what the phone book is anymore. There used to be a thing called a phone book. Uh, and uh, if you sat on it, it made you this tall. Uh, and that, that basically became uh, its use. Uh, 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 but uh, once upon a time, there was a book. Uh, it was called the Yellow Pages, uh, and uh, it was the source of all business information. If you wanted to contact a business, that was where you had to go. Uh, and then the Internet happened, and, uh, uh, and uh, these people, by the way, were facing the decision, what are we? And uh, they decided they were a book. And uh, this other thing called Google decided they were going to be the source of all information. And, um, oh, uh, Google's a part of just about everything everybody does anymore. Our whole business is basically based, or a very significant portion of our business is based on Google continuing to operate, uh, and uh, we don't even let the phone books in the door uh, anymore. We got targeted responsible for the killing of trees. Uh, so, uh, but uh, so, uh, but bounce rate is one of those things. It doesn't really tell you the story uh, of uh, of what uh, of what it once did. Uh, 
So uh, if you're looking for stuff to so if you're looking for stuff to cut out, that's one of those things. Uh, uh, and so relevance and impact and what does it actually mean uh, are some ways that you can uh, that you can uh, uh, start to eliminate uh, data from your analysis. Um, this is what uh, came to my mind. I pulled up real quick. This is what we call our effective marketing hierarchy. You might also hear us refer to it as our big marketing method. And I uh, was going to, we're talking about your, whoa, whoa, our tripod fell down. There we go. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, what we're talking about here is, is uh, this guy right here. This is our effective marketing hierarchy. Uh, all the stuff around the outside is stuff that we're good at here at Levolution. Uh, here's our, we start uh, with defining organizational beliefs. We establish your effective position. This is how uh, uh, we, uh, we work with people. And this is where we're, uh, we're, we're, we're talking, right? We then we identify the key measures. What are your success metrics? I'm also speaking here to mastering communications. You cannot be everywhere. Where should you be? Once you get there, what should you do? The answer is in the data, largely. Largely the answer is in the data. And there's nothing up here about measuring success. We're very big into measurement. Uh, here at Level Solutions, and so uh, so uh, when uh, uh, this is a, a, a what well, we we constructed for our system to, uh, uh, to 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 build a hierarchy around uh, how data is used. Let me clear all this stuff, and I will move on to our next topic. He said confidently. Here we go. Yeah. All right. I told you. Turning what data matters. Let us get into that. Uh, so what data matters? How to determine how I should spend my time, how, I should, how we should spend our efforts in, uh, in, uh, in, in collecting and analyzing data. First question to ask, is this metric relevant to our business goals? About half of you said you had established your business goals, you knew what they were, you knew what your strategic goals were, you shared them regularly, and uh, you knew where you had to be in terms of profitability, in terms of revenue. Uh, in terms of what we did about earlier as a lagging KPI. Is the metric tied to, relevant to, your business goals? If it is not, you could ignore it. If it is, you should be measuring it and influencing it. Question two, are we able to influence this metric? Meaning, if we make a decision, if we shift budget, if we put time and effort into it, are we able to move the needle, right? Are we able to impact this? And not every tactic is is applicable to everybody. Uh, we're uh, uh, SEO, for example. Uh, one of the reasons I like working here, right, uh, is uh, uh, is that we are not an SEO house. Uh, if you go to an SEO agency and you say, "Hey, do I need SEO?" You may as well be asking the guy who needs to pay rent this month. Yes, yes, right. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, the approach that we would recommend uh, is to do the research up front, do the competitive research, and some other things that I may get to talk about here today. Uh, and uh, and decide if you put effort into that, will you be able to do it? Will you be able to make a change? Um, in a microcosm of this, I'll just give you an example. We have uh, uh, clients uh, in the insurance business, and uh, none of them are uh, uh, Geico or Flow from Progressive or Mayhem or the bum, ba bum, ba bum, bum, bum people, et cetera. Uh, all of those people, if you ever Google auto insurance, that's who shows up. And uh, the same people that, po that penetrate every single commercial break on TV that you ever watch also spend billions with a B of dollars to make sure that nobody else shows up for auto insurance. So if you're trying, if you're an insurance company, so our clients have to look them in the eye and tell them you can't store for auto insurance. You don't have the horses, okay? You're going to be upside down in the best of trying to get there. You can't get there. So we have to find other ways to go to you. That would be a decision. We would be unable to influence the metric if we put money uh, and effort behind it. Uh, so don't do it. Uh, finally, finally, are we willing to do what it takes to influence the metric? Okay, so we've done the research. Uh, we have set uh, our, our, our goal. Uh, you know what, I'm going uh, to, I think, yeah, let's just do this. We're going to move right into uh, an example. So uh, uh, that's where my mind went. Uh, and so let's uh, uh, let's just do this. Uh, uh, we're going to give you an example. So our business goal is to increase sales. Put a number there. Uh, we're going to increase uh, sales by five percent, or ten percent, or twenty percent, or by um, a dollar amount uh, that we have uh, uh, this month, this quarter, this year. Uh, is our business goal? We're going to come back to that later. So help me remember this, if you will, Jack. Our business goal is to increase sales by blank. Okay, that's our overarching business goal. 
our lagging KPI that we're going to assign to this is gross profit. Why gross profit? Why do I pick gross profit? Because sales is uh, uh, because sales is a gross profit. Uh, I, I suppose I could have uh, picked net profit. Uh, 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 you would subtract your cost of goods sold uh, from that to get your net profit uh, uh, for that. But we're just going to say increase sales. We're going to look at to keep things simple. Uh, we'll look at gross profit. Gross meaning nothing taken out. We sold this. We profited that much. All right, gross profit before we take out any of the stuff that uh, uh, rent and so forth that we had to get. Uh, to, uh, to get to our net figure. Uh, so our business goal is to increase sales by a, by a number, and our lagging KPI, the thing that's going to indicate whether or not we succeeded, is did, uh, did, we, uh, did we increase our, uh, our gross profit. Our leading KPI, the thing we can influence, is our number of inbound web leads. Now, we probably have more than one lead generation activity going on, right? You're probably doing more than one thing. I hope, certainly hope so uh, uh, to do that. But we're going to focus again here today on just one uh, aspect to keep it simple and manageable. Uh, so our, lead, our, our business goal, increase sales by blank, our lagging KPI, gross profit, our leading KPI, we need to inbound, uh, increase our number of inbound sales leads. Let's say that we've gone through an exercise and said the main thing that we can do, we've done our homework, we've looked at our historical data, and the most cost-effective way that we can uh, increase our sales and our growth, uh, 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 is to increase our number of inbound web leads. Maybe we know we got a high close rate, uh, on uh, on the web leads that uh, that come in, or something like that, that indicates uh, that uh, that that's that that ties together. You start to see how that stuff uh, builds upon each other. So, uh, how would we do this within? Oh, uh, next month we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, this to the degree that we have time today. Uh, but it's relevant next month. This dovetails very nicely uh, into the webinar that Jack and I put together for next month, which is about strategies for turning website visitors into sales leads. Uh, so hopefully you can join us. So go ahead and mark your calendars if you would. Wednesday, June 26th, same back time, uh, same back channel, noon to one uh, here in Denver. Uh, all right. Uh, moving uh, a little more detailed into this. So uh, uh, so our uh, uh, our example uh, inbound. Uh, how might we generate more inbound, uh, more more leads uh, from our inbound uh, uh, from from, uh, from for our more web leads? Uh, all of these things that are listed here. Uh, are, are tactics that, uh, that might be employed, strategies and tactics that might be employed. Uh, content marketing we're not going to go into, but uh, uh, we did do a webinar a couple of months ago, uh, and we'll include a link to that uh, in our follow-up email. Uh, make sure we get to those. Uh, uh, one about thought leadership, and it was We did a webinar on content marketing. Uh, the, uh, so all of these things are ways uh, that uh, uh, that you might uh, that you might generate more inbound uh, uh, web leads tactics that you might employ. Excuse me. Uh, and we'll talk about conversion funnels uh, uh, quite a bit uh, uh, next month too. Uh, so uh, uh, our SEO strategy example. Uh, what are KPIs that you measure? Uh, I'll talk about this for uh, uh, for a bit. Uh, organic visitors. So typically, uh, you know, if you've got an SEO program. Uh, you were looking at the amount of visitors that uh, that uh, that SEO is generating. So search engine optimization uh, uh, for uh, I think everybody on the webinar knows this uh, as I look at our roster of attendees. But uh, just in case, search engine optimization uh, is getting on uh, is your search rank on Google. That SERP S E R P search engine results uh, is uh, when you type something into Google. Google gives you return. The Internet's a big file directory. Google is the world's best administrative assistant. You tell Google, I want this file, and Google runs it in seconds, gives you all the files ranked in Google's belief of their relevance and importance to you uh, with the algorithm that says, I trust this one the most. I think this is most trustworthy. I think it's most relevant to you and ranked uh, uh, in that order. If it's not quite right. You're probably going to give Google more information. Uh, I know I said I wanted the Henderson file. But what I really want is the Henderson file that tells me what the contract is, uh, where the contract expired in November 2018. Oh, but you give me that kind of a whole different search. Now I rank them differently. Okay, uh, search engine optimization is the art and the science of reverse engineering that so that your website shows up uh, on uh, for those uh, uh, an optimal uh, placement for on on those researches. So organic visitors is one of the uh, one of the key metrics uh, that you track. How many visitors came to the website through uh, any given channel uh, and organic search engine optimization. Uh, organic means uh, that's a, it's not paid, it's not local. They click the they, they click the link that came up through the regular old uh, Google algorithm, uh, number one through ten or 
uh, 11 through 20 on page two, et cetera. Uh, top performing search queries. This is one that gets missed a lot. So uh, what words are people typing in that is draw, that are drawing, excuse me. It's one thing to know where you score. It's another thing to know what terms are converting. So what terms are drawing people to your website and having them stay there and engage? Those are your qualified leads. Those are your most engaged. Those are the people that you want to talk to uh, uh, and offer ability uh, uh, at the top of, on the top of your list. And, and one thing that gets missed with SEO is SEO <clears throat> gets you the website visitors. It draws people to your website. <clears throat> Looking one step beyond that is what pages are being visited the most? <clears throat> Entry pages? And are they going to other pages within your website? Is it a blog post? Is it, uh, uh, is it something else that's drawing them? And what we'll do is uh, uh, you go to our website and you click around. And you come to a page that's talking about content marketing or, uh, or uh, Infusionsoft, the, uh, the, uh, the CRM and the marketing automation system that we use and consult on, uh, or a number of other things. You'll see a call to action there that says, hey, let's talk about this. And if you click that, it takes you down a, a conversion funnel, a, a journey uh, is what we call it. So, and how do we decide what pages, uh, uh, what pages to put those conversion funnels on and to construct those conversion funnels, conversion funnels around? Well, one of the main factors is what's our most visited page. Uh, that influences uh, what uh, what goes on to your main navigation and what uh, uh, and, and, and what you put uh, in front uh, in front of people. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk about that. That's one of the things that gets missed. So it's one thing you just, so to know where people are coming uh, will tell you all kinds of things. And most immediately here, uh, you can uh, most immediately you can construct a conversion funnel based on where you are getting the most traffic, uh, among other things. All right. Uh, so what we did there uh, is uh, in that SEO strategy example, just to kind of walk through that again. Uh, did we did we did we resolve all these things? Is this metric relevant to our business goal? What was our business goal? Increase sales. Increase sales by a number, right? Or by a dollar. percentage or a dollar figure. Okay. Uh, is the number of inbound leads to our website going to going to give us a better opportunity to uh, to uh, to meet that goal? Let's say yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, can we influence this metric? Is this a thing we can influence? Well, let's see. We can write content. We can uh, work on our interlinking strategy. We can. Uh, uh, we can uh, uh, manage our inbound link profile. Uh, we can do a number of things. We can uh, uh, we can uh, do a number of things to uh, uh, to influence this metric. Yeah, I'd say we can. We put budget and time behind it, so that's a thing that is fully within uh, our control and our ability to influence. Now, are we willing to do what it takes to influence this metric? Let's say yes, because here we are in the webinar. And can we do all those things? Can we write blog posts? Can we build a website? Yeah, we can do all of those things, right? Can we uh, can we commit to an ongoing basis? So yes, are we willing to do? Yeah, we'll say that. Uh, and so we answered all those questions. Uh, that uh, that is uh, uh, that's an example uh, that we can use. And I'll pause here. Another clock check. How are we doing on time? Twelve thirty-seven. Uh, Twelve thirty-seven. Yeah. Oh, we're way ahead. Okay, good. Good. Uh, I can even slow down. Let's take a couple of questions here. One of our leading KPIs is website conversion rate. What are some ways we can influence this? Uh, okay, yeah, we kind of talked about this a little bit. We'll go into greater depth uh, with this on next month's webinar for sure. Um, some things we can do is A-B testing, uh, both of area testing. So um, uh, a web form fields, calls to action, other elements. So uh, your, uh, uh, there's a thing called uh, A-B testing, and uh, it's, it's used a lot in pay-per-click advertising and in email marketing, right? You test different subject lines. You test at different times of day uh, to do this. Happens in social media marketing uh, also. What time should we post? Uh, uh, what, uh, uh, where should we, uh, uh, if, we're, if we're boosting a post, to whom uh, uh, should we target the boost? Uh, these answers are only available by testing. Uh, I mean, you can do some research on the upfront and, uh, and, uh, and understand who your, what we call target personas are, understand their behaviors and so forth. Uh, but uh, once you put the rubber to the road on that, uh, you are going to want to test uh, what you're uh, what you're doing, and to just speak to the uh, uh, the specific question: website conversion rate. Uh, uh, how you uh, how you test that is uh, 
you can there, there are programs actually that uh, that you can load into your website um, depending on what kind of websites that you use we work primarily in WordPress and it's really uh, easy and good uh, for these types of things uh, maybe you test a different call to action uh, so uh, a different form field uh, one of the things that will that will test is uh, we'll have a client uh, for example that uh, that needs wants all of this information so before they uh, uh, before you can submit uh, on the form of the website they want your name and your phone number and your email address and the reason uh, that you're contacting and maybe your address what part of town you're in and so forth uh, and uh, and maybe they need all of that information uh, to know if they can serve you maybe you you you, you might operate outside of their service you might be outside of their service area or something and it's not uh, and they don't want the call uh, uh, statistically the fewer form fields that you put, generally speaking, the fewer form, the less information that you require, the less that you require from your prospective customer, the more likely you are to get them over that barrier, right? The slower, the, the lower the barrier, the more likely the conversion. Uh, and so one of the things that we'll test is, okay, Mr. Client, uh, you say that uh, uh, that you uh, only want that you uh, you only want to talk to people who are willing to fill out all these forms, and we would like to test if you get more leads. And test the lead quality. If we do it uh, with fewer forms, we're acquiring fewer information. And if you'll approve this, we'll run an A/B test on your website, on your landing page. And what we'll do is, over a matter of time, we'll wait until we have enough. We'll, we'll gather enough data until it's statistically significant, uh, and then we can speak to. And uh, and then we'll look at the results. Did one convert better than the other? Did we get more leads? What was the lead quality? What was the impact once we got past all that? Got to your sales team. Uh, did they waste a lot of time, or did they make their revenue? Or did, and which was it? Which, which of these got you closer to your goal? Right? If your goal was because your goal wasn't uh, to make things easier for my sales team and to save them more time, it was to increase profitability, was to increase business, uh, increase net sales. So did that happen? What got us closer to it? And you look at those results and you make a decision to go forward. Then you know what you do? You run another test. You test something else. You're constantly seeing what else you can do. To impact that and to drive more conversions, you get more out of the investment that you made. Um, I hope that's clear. I hope that helped. Um, uh, all right, so this isn't a question, but I'm happy to address it. We tried SEO and it didn't work. Um, all right. Uh, well, there are different approaches to everything. Uh, my next uh, my next meeting is uh, is with somebody uh, who, uh, who contacted us. Um, uh, even though he's pretty sure that SEO doesn't work, he tried it for a year uh, and it didn't happen. And uh, I, uh, I looked at the, the website, and all I can uh, all I can tell you is this: there are different approaches to things. Uh, a uh, a common pitfall, uh, a common uh, pitfall for search engine optimization, uh, is that um, you try to score for words that you can't. Auto insurance uh, would be an example for that. You're never going to get there, so don't try. Uh, you uh, uh, or you may have uh, terms. Uh, that you think you want to score for, or that you can score for, and then one of the reasons that you can get there so easily is because nobody else is trying to get there, and maybe nobody else is trying to get there because there's not enough volume uh, there to uh, to, uh, to to get you the numbers that you need to actually drive uh, uh, conversions. We have to get in front of more people. So what we look for uh, in that uh, we look at a couple things. What do, what are the returns? Uh, is Google uh, returning uh, uh, the kind of content, the kind of uh, of, uh, of, of results that you'd want? If uh, you're a company and you want to uh, talk to people who uh, who might want to buy your product or your service, uh, and Google and the, whatever the search term is, uh, Google's giving you the Wikipedia definition of that, and here are courses you can take online to become one of those. Uh, then, uh, then you got no business trying to score for that term. Why would you put effort uh, to that? There may be a similar term, we call it a longer tail term, uh, more words, uh, that dials and it gets more specific. And yeah, the search volume is going to go down, uh, but your ability to score probably increases and your lead quality probably increases. So fewer people with better people uh, are going to are going to see it. That in a nutshell, uh, the ROI, the ROI centric approach, uh, the scientific method. Uh, really fixes that. Um, uh, we're uh, uh, we try to minimize the amount of let's throw stuff against the wall and see if it sticks. Uh, we'd much rather reverse engineer the data, plot a path, uh, and move forward down that path, beating the hell out of our hypothesis uh, as we go and testing, testing, testing as we go. I. Uh, 
happy to chat about that. Uh, we do offer free evaluations uh, uh, for, uh, for SEO. So if anybody uh, uh, would like uh, to, uh, con to, to contact me or, uh, or, to, uh, or to get an evaluation done on their current website and the current SEO efforts, we offer that uh, at no charge. It's my pleasure uh, to speak to you. Send us a, a chat email or an email, uh, a chat message or an email at any time. Uh, and uh, and we always uh, we always offer that service. Okay, uh, I want to make sure we get to this. We did promise that we'd talk about some small business systems and tools. Uh, we will dive more into uh, a few of these next month. Uh, but that image on the right there uh, is a heat map. Cool stuff, right? Uh, uh, and uh, all of these things have pros and cons, and the voice of them is debatable. And you can certainly find uh, a, a very well-founded argument uh, about uh, about heat maps. Uh, it's uh, it's the third one. Uh, it's the first one, uh, item on our on our on our list there. And what this is showing you uh, is uh, they'll show you where the eyeballs go, where the mouse goes, uh, or you may see them in a layered format. This tells you how far people move down your website as they scroll. And most of, most most first impressions on websites are on the uh, on a phone. Uh, uh, most conversions uh, anymore uh, for consultative businesses like ours. Uh, come through the come through the uh, come through the desktop. Uh, it's just uh, if you're doing anything with the comma and it especially, and some of you are, uh, people are more likely to convert uh, on a desktop or on a phone uh, than they are uh, than they are on the phone. But the first impressions, uh, eighty percent, uh, I think, of the, uh, are, are the numbers of the first time I see it, uh, it's on the phone um, uh, because that's when I've had uh, a moment standing in line at the grocery or talking to my friends at the golf club or something. Uh, so, uh, so those heat maps can tell you a lot, provided that you get enough data. You need to drive traffic to the website uh, for this, uh, this to happen. We always talk about CRM uh, and marketing automation. Uh, it's, uh, it, that is, can't say it enough, table stakes anymore for small business. Uh, it's, uh, it's becoming less and less of an option. Uh, uh, you, you, you need to have some sort of a social media presence. You need to have some way for people to contact you online. And you need to be using a contact relationship management system, and you need to be doing have some sort of email communication that is preferably tied inexorably to that uh, to uh, save yourself all kinds of time. And, and uh, uh, one of the things that we'll uh, offer in our follow up and uh, our emails uh, following uh, is a, a list of, uh, uh, or a, I'm sorry, a link to a white paper that we offer that's uh, 25 things that all small businesses should automate. Uh, and if you read that, uh, I think you, 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 you'll, you'll start to add up the time that you're spending on uh, on tasks and tedium. Uh, the price point, <clears throat> excuse me, the price points for these systems have dropped dramatically. They were once the uh, the, the purview of the enterprise, uh, but uh, uh, there are a number of very very good systems <clears throat> out there. Uh, if you just opt one that we prefer, but it's not the only good one uh, uh, that uh, that uh, can be used and integrated uh, with these efforts. They're great for retention. Uh, and uh, and for <clears throat> and for nurturing uh, in particular, uh, but they can also help uh, 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 increase velocity through your sales funnel. Uh, and uh, uh, we've got at least a couple people on our webinar, our current clients, who can testify uh, to how they uh, uh, how they tie inexorably to your internal business operations and and, uh, uh, and beyond your marketing and sales and improving your internal processes. I highly recommend uh, if uh, if you've not taken either any of our per, uh, any of our previous webinars to take a look. CRM and marketing automation, uh, and that's another free consultation that we do uh, as well. Um, anonymous visitor uh, uh, web, website visitor ID. Here's some spooky stuff, right? So we actually have uh, software on our website which tells me if you come to my, not you personally, but if a company has been surfing, uh, has been clicking pages on our website, and what pages they click, and what, how much time they spent on those pages, and even if they choose not to contact me. Gives me some research uh, uh, pointers about what the, what's out there in the marketplace, what's about to happen. I can do my homework before you call me and be very knowledgeable uh, about your company, uh, but before you uh, before you identify me, that is extremely inexpensive uh, uh, to get on your website. And uh, uh, and of course, many of these things, the, uh, it's one thing to have a tool, and another thing to know how to use it. Uh, so that's where we end up adding value uh, to those kind of things is in the consulting end and the strategy and how this ties in. How to increase, uh, how to maximize your uh, uh, your return uh, on that marketing investment. Um, visitor behavior analysis uh, uh, is another one up there. Uh, it goes kind of goes along with heat maps, uh, but within your Google Analytics, 
uh, you can uh, you can look at uh, at how people are consuming the site. When we build new websites, we don't construct uh, uh, an information architecture uh, or a file uh, uh, structure or content structure without first looking at what the historical data on uh, on the uh, website analytics is. And one of the things we, we really want to see is is there a information flow that's working? Uh, and if, there's, if there are things that are not working, we want people to go to these to go to these pages or to these forms, and here's where they're dropping off in the meantime. Uh, uh, so uh, the behavior flow of how people are actually surfing and working through uh, consuming the content uh, on your site. Um, if there is, if you're building a new website, uh, this is something that you absolutely want to know because what if part of your website, if what if there's an information flow that's actually working? Working. Let's keep it the way it is. You don't have to change that just because you're building a new website. Just an example there. Uh, and retargeting is one that I uh, uh, that I, I, I wanted to mention uh, uh, because uh, uh, digital advertising you can pretty much turn on and off and up and down like a faucet. We've got more budget. Uh, we've got less budget. Uh, we've got uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, the, the, the uh, we've got a, a, a couple of very seasonal um, uh, clients. Uh, there are seasons where uh, HVAC, right? Uh, we have uh, people who, uh, one of our clients is uh, uh, sells, um, one of our clients is a big, huge company that sells evaporative air coolers, all right? These things that cool like entire warehouses, right? They're big deals, they're big purchases. Uh, although I do think they get purchased by, uh, by residents as well. Um, uh, and their business moves. And when he buys evaporative cooler, the, the, the evaporative cooler business kind of tends to tail off in the winter time. Well, they're a global provider. So, uh, so the marketing moves around to wherever the warm weather is. Uh, more locally, we've got uh, some uh, uh, HVAC clients, heating, uh, ventilation, air conditioning uh, clients who uh, are small businesses uh, and get all the leads and all the work and all that they can handle uh, during the warmer months. Uh, and uh, during the colder months, they don't. So that's when they turn on their pay-per-click advertising, right? We turn it off uh, because it, it, there's no sense in paying for leads that you can't service, uh, that you're going to have to be say no to. Uh, retargeting doesn't work like that. Uh, retargeting, uh, which is for those of you who said, boy, you know, I could use a new pair of shoes, and you Google shoes, and you're looking for uh, shoes, and then you decide, okay, I'm going to buy the shoes, or I'm not going to buy the shoes, you complete your purchase, you decide not to, and then for the next six weeks or six months, the advertisers you say, "Hey, you should buy shoes. We got shoes. These shoes would look great on you. You need, you know, the, uh, all those ads that keep following you around is a little creepy. Uh, your, uh, uh, your, uh, 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 that's retargeting. Retargeting has to build volume before it can actually start sending out those ads." So even if you don't want to do a retargeting campaign right now for future consideration, we, we, we strongly recommend installing the retargeting pixel on your website, getting an account and installing the retargeting pixel. Because only if you've got the historical data, only if you've got that, that quantity built up, will you be able to launch a retargeting campaign on command. Some examples uh, that I wanted to make sure that we speak to. How am I doing on time? 52. 52. Okay, all right. Uh, well, we may run uh, a little early. Uh, but do we get any more questions uh, that came uh, that came through on the chat line? I think we dealt with all of them that we got. Uh, I wanted to talk about an optimized marketing plan uh, because we uh, we titled the uh, we titled the webinar uh, effectively using data to optimize your marketing funnel. So let's talk about what an optimized marketing funnel is. It is these things, these actionable insights, uh, determining what data matters, uh, the right systems and tools, uh, and constantly uh, measure test uh, and improve. And that graphic over there that's on the right is a very rudimentary representation of, uh, of, uh, of a marketing funnel. You've got your lead generation stuff, your awareness stuff, all right, that builds, right? Uh, and that may be those things that we mentioned earlier, content marketing, search and optimization, digital advertising, pay-per-click, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that may pull people to your website, for example. Uh, and, uh, and then your website needs to have a journey. It needs to have an experience uh, that uh, that converts. Uh, uh, that was, was that last month we talked about uh, differentiating your website yep. experience. Growing sales. Yep. Okay, growing sales. That that's up. We'll we'll include that in the uh, uh, a link to that webinar uh, in the following email, the follow up emails as well. Uh, uh, so uh, so now you need to convert, uh, and then uh, uh, and now you've converted into leads, and now it's up to uh, largely the sales department uh, to uh, to close the deal. 
or first to qualify the deal. Is this a good fit? Uh, uh, because uh, chances are that not everybody you talk to is going to be somebody who can afford your services or a good fit for you. Not everybody doesn't make you a bad person. Make them a bad person just means not everybody should work with everybody else. It's okay. Uh, and what this leaves out, uh, and what we did not have time uh, to go into and address uh, today, uh, is what happens after the close. Uh, I, I often mention a book that I read called Duct Tape Marketing uh, several years ago. It was written by a guy named John Gantz. Uh, uh, he, uh, he looked at the marketing funnel and said the problem with this thing is that there's a hole in the bottom of the funnel. There's not enough attention being paid, it's being paid uh, to retaining uh, the customers that you have, uh, the clients that you have, or to leveraging them as a business development resource. These are the people who know you. Where do our best clients come from, no matter what? the industry is, the size of the company, the age of the company, every single time you ask the question, where do your best clients come from? The answer is the R word, referrals. Uh, that is, uh, you're going to spend four or five times at least uh, uh, the effort and the, and the money to acquire a new client as you will to service the one that you have or to generate recommendations and referrals and introductions uh, from the people who know you and trust you and for whom you do the good work. So what this graphic leads out is uh, your retention efforts uh, and your and your referral efforts, and that's one of those things. I'm sorry to keep up on it, but CRM and marketing automation uh, can really ease uh, your uh, your use uh, and your results uh, your results from. Uh, so uh, uh, you might also hear that referred to, by the way, as a flywheel. Uh, it is one of those uh, concepts out there that I really like, uh, and uh, and so the vernacular discussion is changing and it's uh, it's evolving and uh, and. Uh, it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing. So, how to look at your at your marketing funnel? We talked about we talked about uh, uh, marketing funnel uh, uh, in a previous webinar as well. You'll have access to all those recordings. Uh, um, uh, back to uh, as we wrap up here. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, how we work with our clients. Uh, I bring this uh, bring this up again. That's how I had it handy. Uh, the uh, uh, we're uh, uh, this is uh, we start uh, by uh, uh, with understanding your organizational beliefs. We don't necessarily have to do all this work, but this is all the stuff we want to know if we're going to be a, an effective partner for you. Uh, it's, uh, we're, uh, we're most effective when, uh, or anybody will be, uh, when they understand these things. What's going to differentiate you, your culture, and what you stand for in the world, okay? Uh, there are uh, Coca-Cola, right, uh, does not come to us. The world's number one uh, consumer product does not come to us and say, hey, buy our sugar water, it's delicious. Uh, because if they did that, there would be nothing more than another product on the shelf next to other products on the shelf that are exactly like them. Uh, instead, they touch us uh, emotionally, and they do that because they have a they, they have a belief, they have a purpose. Refresh the world uh, is uh, is their is their mantra, right? That's what they're here to do. That's their purpose. And so, when they drive loyalty, all their advertising, all their messaging is driven by that guiding concept. Refresh the world. Uh, and, uh, and again, for us, it's helped passionate people thrive. That's why we do this. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, uh, we move to effective positioning, establishing your, uh, you might hear called it Blue Ocean. Uh, it's another good book, Blue Ocean Strategy. Uh, uh, your, uh, but where uh, should you be uh, that you can differentiate, differentiate yourself from everybody else? Uh, uh, one thing you don't want to do is, uh, is compete in a red ocean. There's nowhere to go but down. Uh, 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 the red ocean, blood in the water. I won't, uh, uh, I won't. Spoil the ending for you uh, of that uh, of that book. Um, identifying key measures, uh, inspiring engagement. We have learned that uh, uh, that you can uh, craft the most elegant, sophisticated marketing strategy. And if everybody from CEO to CSR does not understand her role in delivering the brand promise, it breaks. Uh, so uh, understand everybody needs to understand what it means when they put your logo on and represent your company. The word that you use, we say this, we don't say that. Here's our purpose, etc. Uh, mastering communications, I spoke to that. And then measuring success, systematically improving. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do stuff right. We're going to change the world. We're going to be uh, better at this. We're going to find a better way than anybody's ever done it. And as soon as we do that, what's going to happen? Here come the apes, right? Here come the copiers, man. Uh, they're going to uh, they're going to be like this. And we have to continue to innovate. We have to continue uh, being uh, asking more of ourselves uh, and being better. Uh, so, uh, and, and typically, an engagement starts with discovery uh, and moves into a data-driven action plan, which includes. Uh, an ongoing program. All of ours are month to month. We don't do long-term contracts, so we don't believe in them. Uh, we're out of time. I want to invite everybody to join us next month again. Uh, Must-watch webinars, strategies for turning website visitors into sales leads. Dovetails nicely from this. 
Uh, one thing you can do is go back uh, and uh, and maybe watch uh, what we watch this webinar on uh, on Tuesday lunchtime on the uh, on the 25th, and then join us for the sequel on uh, on uh, on the 26th noon to 1 p.m. My name is Mike Hanbury. I'm director of business development here at Revolution. It's been my pleasure uh, to be with you uh, today. Uh, please watch uh, for our, uh, our our follow ups with all that stuff that we promised, and uh, go get them, y'all. I uh, hope this has been good for you. Have a great day and a great week. Finish it strong. Thanks for joining us today. Join us next month.